A Chinese lunar mission has found a new source of water on the moon. Joining us live now is Australia's astronomer at large, Fred Watson. Fred, always good to see you. Thank you for making the time. How much water are we talking about here and where was it found? <laughs> Um, we're not talking about gallons immediately, but there may be, uh, you know, when you look at uh, what seems to be available on the moon, there may be many millions of litres of water. But the tricky bit is that they are found, or this water is found in tiny glass beads, uh, like the ones you've just seen on the screen. These range from uh, less than a millimetre in size up to less, a little bit less than a centimetre. And they, uh, the beads themselves are formed when micrometeorites, and that's something, you know, maybe the size of a small stone uh, hits the Earth's surface because there's an impartation of energy. The amount of energy that's in an impacting object is immediately turned into heat. And so the, the soil around the impact site is, is heated very strongly and rapidly and turns into these glass beads. Uh, now, the story gets a little bit more complicated from there because these glass beads lie on the surface of the moon and are impacted by hydrogen atoms from the sun. Uh, the sun gives out this, what we call the solar wind, a breeze of subatomic particles, which essentially fill the solar system. And when they hit these glass beads, hydrogen being a very tricky element, uh, it's the lightest of the elements, kind of climbs inside them. Uh, through the surface, which is slightly porous, meets up with oxygen atoms within the beads, and it turns into water. So what you have is, is a glass, uh, tiny glass ferrule, which has got molecules of water in it. It's not liquid, it's just single molecules. But the idea is that perhaps you could then heat these beads again and uh, it, um, c collect the, the stuff that comes off it, condense it, and you've got buckets of water which is useful not just for astronauts who might want to drink water when they are on the moon, but water makes rocket fuel because it's hydrogen and oxygen. Right, so those tiny beads, uh, they're not the only source of water on the moon, or, or are they? That's a really good question. And in many ways, the answer is, we don't know for certain, but probably not, because there's really strong evidence that around the moon's south pole, uh, in, a, in, in craters that are always shielded from the sun, uh, craters where sunlight never reaches, uh, there are actually deposits of ice down there. And by that, I just mean ice lying on the floor of the craters and probably uh, mixed up with the soil as well. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the NASA Artemis mission, which will, uh, within the next two to three years, take uh, astronauts to the moon, uh, it is one reason why they are targeting that South Pole region, because of these deep craters with possible resources of, of ice in, the, in their bases. Fred, the West can be a bit sceptical sometimes about information and, and data coming out of China. Can we trust the information released by the space agency? Does the space agency work any better with the other international space agencies or, or is there still a, a lot of secrecy on that front in terms of how they collect this data and then, and then share it? Um, the space agency itself is is secretive. Um, it's in many ways an arm of the uh, of the of basically the military. Uh, so NASA doesn't have direct links with that. But this research has come from the universities in China, who were handed these samples uh, brought back from the moon by a spacecraft called Chang'e 5 uh, back in 2020. So uh, the universities have carried out this work. Um, some of the researchers are, uh, you know, many are Chinese nationals, many come from uh, international organizations. So my answer to the question is yes, this is trustworthy research. It's been peer reviewed. It's in one of the leading uh, scientific journals, Nature Astronomy. And I think you can, you, you can trust what you're reading. Good to hear. What about the other planets and, and moons? Can we, or do we assume that that some or most have water, can we say definitively, or, or are we just speculating? Um, it's not speculation. Uh, so Mars, we know, has uh, huge reserves of water. Certainly under its uh, polar caps, it has polar caps like the Earth does, which are made mostly of water ice. Uh, but there's also a, a kind of permafrost under the surface in the Arctic and Antarctic regions uh, of Mars. You, you, all you have to do is scrape away the soil on the top, and a spacecraft has done that uh, in the past, and you find that there's ice underneath. So water is there 
in quantity. Uh, plus, uh, when you look at uh, the moons of some of the giant planets, the outer planets, and I'm thinking of Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, and particularly Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, we know that they not only have ice on their surface, but beneath that ice is liquid water, uh, essentially an ocean of liquid water that sits on top of a rocky core and is, uh, has on top of it a layer of solid ice. And that's one of the things that excites astrobiologists, the people who are interested in the prospects of finding living organisms in space, uh, it excites them about these distant worlds in orbit around the giant planets. Fred Watson, always fascinating speaking with you. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much.